book right now. Uh, I thank God for you coming in and into the service with us. My God, we are just, just so excited. We are just got out of our praise and worship and prayer. And my God, we were just saturating the atmosphere and getting ready. And we are ready and we are ready and we are ready this morning. And I thank you for joining in. in. I am Pastor Gerald LeBlanc here at Divine Harvest Ministries. Thank you for allowing us to come in with you and you come in with us as we receive the word of God this morning. I, am, I, I, I just got to get right in the scripture right now. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're prepared. I hope you was praying and you're charged up in your spirit. I hope your mind is already open and ready to receive God. Look, if you still got to reach out to someone, hit them your text or hit them a Facebook connect and say, hey, I'm on Facebook live with Divine Harvest Ministries. God is about to drop a word in our spirit. So hook up with me on this live stream and we'll talk later. Amen. Praise God. You know, something's been going on. Something's been going on. This is what God has been sharing in my spirit. Ever since last week, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding from God how much we need to uh, find the root and find the source and be coming to that place where God wants us to be so he can do the things that he wants to do for us. Uh, you know, in my time of meditation on this week uh, uh, and study, uh, I, I was reading through, through some stuff and material and there was a quote that stood out in my heart and my spirit all week long. And you know when something just attaches itself to you and you just can't, you just can't put it down because it just, it just impacts the way you think and everything. And, and, and it was a quote from Maya Angelou. And she said, nothing can dim the light that shines from within. Man, when I read that, it just like really, really, uh, it, it just got all up in me. And I started and I read it again and I dissected it word by word. And I try to understand the impact on the value of that word. And, and, and again, just so that you get it again, she says, nothing can dim the light that shines from within. And, and, and that thing just, it, it just blew me it just blew me up because I realized that no matter how you see me or I see you or people see us, it really cannot shut down the way we are on the inside. It really can't impact what we are and who we are on the inside. The only impact that changes is the Spirit of God in us. And so, and so this really, really got home close to me when I saw that. Because, you know, like you, I'm sure, or if you like anything like me, people have criticized me a lot. I've been criticized all down through the years. You know, somebody don't like this about you. Somebody don't like that about you. And I've come to realize I really don't care what you don't like about me, I really just want to make sure that God loves who I am and God can work with me. Because I can't change every time somebody doesn't like any, something about me. Can you imagine trying to change to match everybody? You will, ne you will never know who you are. You're just going to keep on changing to accommodate whoever don't like something about you. But I'm going to change, oh my God, so that I can line up with God, so that God can love the who I am. And once I can do that, then I understand that I'm on the right path. One thing that you have control over, for the most part, is your mind. And most everything else is influenced by external forces and conditions. Think about it. You control the, the, your thoughts and the way you think and the things you do. And, 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 and oftentimes, things that are surrounding you, external things, tend to sway your thoughts and sway the way you, 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 you manage things and think about things. 
By nature, one's mind is governed by views and teachings and opinions and rules and laws, etc. When we use all these things, it tends to impact the way we think, the decisions we make. So, so, so your mind is crowded with all this mental activity and, and everything is battling and, and, and fighting for your approval and your consent. Everything that's going on in your mind is trying to say, pick me, pick me, I got it. This is what it should be like. This is what it shouldn't be like. This is what it... And so it, this, th th this mind mental activity could drive you to the point of destruction if you are not in control. If you're always jumping here, there, and everywhere, if you don't have a mindset to, to make decisions, final decisions, and be able to stand by them, if you don't have a God spirit guide in your mind, and you know that after you've made a decision, I've made that decision based on God, I'm just going to stand on the word of God. If you don't have that, all these other external forces and external things that we try to juggle and manage, it could destroy you. One of the most important takeaways that I always have gotten from Jesus' ministry was the fact that they could not destroy his work. So they always attempted to destroy his reputation. A lot of times, as you look through the ministry of Jesus, Jesus' work was what, 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 what was without fault, without flaw. And so when the people, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and, and, and the priests and so forth, when they could not challenge his work, when they couldn't say, well, it was wrong to heal this person, or how do you, do, what they would do was they would challenge his reputation. And so I felt like Jesus' ministry is the example that we should we, we should go by. Challenge my, my, my reputation all you want. Be, talk about me all you want. It doesn't matter. But as long as I'm working in the will of God, I can sleep comfortable at night. I can do uh, 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 the comfort zone in the night because I know that uh, God has guided me. Today I just want to speak to the sons and daughters of God as the Holy Spirit will permit me. And while this may not be for everybody, it is for somebody today. God showed me that in our life, there is an appropriate and a favorable time which is individually tailored to everyone. I found out as I read into the book of Ecclesiastics this week that the Bible reminds us that to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under the sun, under heaven. And it breaks down and it says, it's a time to be born and a time to die. It's a time to plant and a time to uproot. It teaches us it's a time to build and a time to break down. It's a time to weep and a time to to laugh, it's, and there's a whole lot more in that teaching. But what the Holy Spirit said was, God is using this right present moment as a time to grant us an opportunity. God is using this time now to grant us an opportunity. And this morning I want to speak to you from a topic Re-establish your position. Re-establish your position. The text I'm going to use this morning, if you have your Bibles, break it open with me to the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 12. I'm going to read a couple of verses uh, to you if you got your Bible close at hand. I hope you came to the live stream with your Bibles this morning because you're so charged up and ready. You've been in the Word already. You could probably preach a message or two right now to me. But just let me share this with you. Second Samuel chapter 12 at the 13th verse. The Bible says, So David 
said to Nathan. There's some key things I want you to have this morning to take away. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because by the deed, by this deed that you had committed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. And the child also who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became ill. David uh, therefore pleaded with God for the child, and David fasted and went in and laid all night on the ground. So the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the ground, but he would not nor did he eat food with them. The Bible says in the 18th verse, Then on the seventh day it came to pass that the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him, and he would not heed our voice. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm to us. When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to the servants, Is the child dead? And they said, Yes, he is. And the 20th verse, And the Bible says, So David arose from the ground washed and anointed himself and he changed his clothes and he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. <laughs> then here what he did after he did that. Then he went to his own house and when he requested they set food before him and he ate. I want to rest right there in the scriptures. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people, God, to release this word that you have put in my spirit. I pray, Father, even now, even as the framework of my mind have taken this word and presented it in the natural, I pray, Father, that your anointing would come upon it and that your anointing would enhance it, embellish it, and cause it to reach every individual in whatever situation, condition, or state that they're in. I pray this word, God, would be tailored to everyone that will view this live stream today and beyond. I pray, Father, whenever it is being looked at, whenever it's being listened to, that the word will transform itself and address the issues of this and, and whichever individual is looking at it, it will address their life at that point, at that moment, and at that time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for allowing me to be your messenger this morning. I pray as your word go forth this morning, God, it will find clarity and understanding upon the people's minds, upon their spirits, and God, your will and your word and your results would be revealed in Jesus' name. I feel it safe to say that we can all agree that this year has been nothing short of crisis or catastrophe, nothing short of disaster or complete mess. But the Spirit of God captured my attention this week and continually kept pressing in my spirit that we are actually in a time of opportunity. I hear like God saying, all this what has happened, watch carefully, 
because I am now presenting you an opportunity. Everything during the last uh, past 11 months or so indicates a reversal, a reversal of all the gains and all the improvements and all the growth and all the productivity that we had experienced prior to the beginning of 2020. Everything that we had done in 2019, every gain that you have made and every uh, step that you've taken in a positive direction, everything that you were building toward and everything that was set up to, to, to come to you in this year, it seemed that everything took, uh, took a reverse and everything fell apart and everything went backward. And I can only imagine how much the events of this year have negatively impacted or repositioned the lives of the people of God. I can only imagine because it has done a lot to me, and I'm sure it's done a lot to you. Who would have thought that we would have been spending all this time trying to accomplish things from home that we need to go out and do? I felt in my spirit, for, for, for a point of analogy, I felt like a sprinter, you know, a, 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 a hundred meter sprinter. Who, who, who gets on the starting blocks and you hear the pistol shot and you know the race is about to start and all of a sudden the pistol goes off and you start the race and you bust out of the starting blocks and you're ready to race to the finish line and that finish line of this year would have been right now. You've been ready to race to that finish line in January only to hear the starting pistol go off a second time and found out it was a false start. Uh, so you had to go back to your starting position. You had to do it all over again. I felt like this is what this year translated into. We started off in January and we're about to bust out of the blocks and run to the finish line and get our prize and get our promises and get all the things that God said is ours. We, 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 we sat in church on, 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 on New Year's Eve night and we heard the, prof the prophetic word and we heard all the things that God was saying to us and we got out in January and we were ready, we were excited, we were pumped up, we were psyched out. We look for the promotion that year. We look for the, the influx that year. We look for the overflow that year. We were ready to take on whatever God was bringing. And all of a sudden, when we started this race, we heard the second pistol shot. And it says, come back to the, finish, to the starting line. It's a false start. And now here we are, the end of the year. And God said, we're starting over. God said, reestablish your position. Get back in the starting block. Because this time, I don't know about anybody else. I didn't get any word from the CDC. I didn't get anything from anybody about vaccine and how things are going to happen. I don't know none of that stuff. What I do know is God, hear me this morning, but people of God, is not going to put us through this anymore because he is presenting us with an opportunity to step out from this place that we've been in for the last 11 months. He is giving us an opportunity right now. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why. But he is giving us an opportunity now. He said, if you grab a hold of what I'm asking you to do now, if you reestablish yourself and reestablish your position in me, I'm about to bring Bring you out of some things. Some people may not come out. Some people may still want to sit there and, 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 and complain about what we are in. Complain about how we're doing. Complain about what we don't have. Complain about how we're not moving forward. And they want to sit there and have that conversation. But God said to those who want to get back in the starting block and reposition yourself, I'm about to take you on the run and you are going to get to that place of your promise rather than just sitting there this is your opportunity to re-establish your position and reset yourself for the promises of this year
He says, be mentally and emotionally and spiritually prepared to restart the journey to your assigned promises. What I want you to understand here is consider 2020 as a delay of your opportunities, not an abandonment of your opportunity, not an abandonment of your promises. It was just a delay. It was a loss. It wasn't, it wasn't wrong. It wasn't a mistake that God made. But this happened, and whatever reason it happened, and by whatever manner it happened, God says, now is your time to resume your place in me and receive the things that I'm going to give to you. Uh, if you want to just sit there and continue to harp about the negative, God says you're not going to move forward. The only way is you got to reestablish yourself in me and in your position and you can expect a greater, even greater, an even greater, God says, an even stronger and more successful 2021. God said, tell the people of God, uh, don't put up no boundaries on him. Don't put up no boundaries on your mind. Uh, take down all these fences and don't pull out your measuring tape and decide how far you want to go. But just go with what God has given you. Because the Bible tells me this is not a time. This is not a time to be conservative, to be scared or to be anxious. If you can just wait on the Lord and be of good courage, God is going to restore and replenish and reset your year coming. If you can just establish your faith in Christ Jesus, reestablish it and walk in the fullness, in the fullness and the God's glory and favor. There's no limit to what God is going to replace in your life. The word testifies this to us. And it says, be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will cause the rain to come down for you the former and the latter rain watch this in the first month oh my god january is looking good right now i don't know about you but it's looking good and I've been done gone through all these months. Uh, and I need something uh, to bring me in a place of expectation. Something uh, to give me hope. And when God showed me this, I said, January is looking good. Uh, I might have to go through a preparation period. Uh, and God said, right now, begin to prepare to reestablish your position. Reestablish yourself. Uh, get back to that place uh, where you're not looking at the things of this year, but you're looking to God and looking onto the hills from whence cometh your help. For the Bible says that God will command and send help. And I know that we have all been looking for help, but sometime and some places we have been looking for God was not there. We have been looking for help from people, from government, from all kinds of places. And God said, I don't want you looking to them. I want you looking to me, the author and finisher of your faith. For I know your uprisings and I know your down sittings and I know your thoughts are for God's head. And right now, if you would refocus and reset yourself uh, in my spirit, I will bring you out of this. Uh, there's been a lot of spiritual debt on this year, a lot of disappointment on this year. And the Lord said, just as some had to shut down their businesses in the natural, uh, some people lost their jobs and some missed their opportunities. Uh, God said to tell, I saw the sons and daughters. Uh, I saw my children closing their spirit down, losing their minds and shutting down their faith. Uh, he said, I saw, I saw them weakening. I saw them ready to give up. Uh, I saw them, he said, but tell them this is their opportunity right now to reestablish 
establish their position. They don't have to give up. They don't have to call it quits. They don't have to just let it be done. They don't have to accept this as lost and abandonment. This was just delay. God said it was just a delay. Somebody need to revive your spirit. And you don't need a Jesusa Street revival. What you need right now is to reset in God and believe that he that had begun this work in you, he's able to bring it to pass. In the book of 2 Corinthians it says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, my God, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So everything that has been going on down through the past 12 months, it might have taken the natural things. It might have weakened your pantry from with food. It might have shrunk your money in the bank. It might have depressed you and it might have weakened your faith and caused you to wonder how you're going to make it. But the Bible tells us uh, for our light affliction my God Almighty which is but for a moment uh, is working for us uh, far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory for while we do not look at the things which are seen but the things which are not but, but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal somebody need to get this this morning all the stuff that we've been seeing is going to be over but the stuff that we do not see God is about to release it means that the natural setbacks of this year which has presented us with actually the spiritual muscle to tear down the fences and the restrictions which has held our mind hostage for the past 12 months this stuff this time that we've been through has presented us with an opportunity to flex your spiritual muscle, to get deep in faith with God, and to know that God is not a man that he can lie. This is the time to flex your spiritual muscle and get in your faith faith mode with God and know that God's not going to leave you nor forsake you like this. This is your opportunity to step into the power of God and claim the promises which God had already assigned to you. It's your opportunity to do what God says you can do and not what man says you cannot do because God says you can call those things that are not as though they were. So it's time for the faith walkers and the believers of God to begin to use the things and the tools that God has given you and not succumb to the things that the world has oppressed you with. I know we've been short on some stuff. I understand we've been struggling through some new things. The new norm as they call it has pushed us back. But God said if you got faith as a grain of mustard seed you can sell unto the mountains be thou removed in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to somebody this morning. You need to stop looking at all the stuff that has gone wrong and begin to look Look to the one who is right. Begin to look to the Lord God, your Savior, your healer, your deliverer, who brought you out all the years before 2020. And now we have gotten into a trip. We have tripped up and we have fell over. Who said God can't pick us up? Oh my God, oh my. Who said God's hand is not reaching out to grab us up? You see, you see, you see, it's an opportunity that we have to take because when your mind and your spirit becomes the fertile ground upon which God can see this word you will begin to enter into your harvest of God's promises if God can see the word in you and your ground is of good fertile soil then the only thing can come out of it is a harvest 
of God's promise. Your opportunities are going to outweigh your disappointments. Your opportunities are going to overcome your failure. Your successes are going to be far greater than the 2020 failures that we experience. Everything God said, everything. When God told me this, I, I got so excited about it. He says everything that was broke in 2020 is going to be made whole. So whatever you lost this year, God is going to replace it. Everything the canker womb and the palmer womb had destroyed, God says I'm going to replace it. What was limited upon you this year is about to excel. And what was less, God said, is about to become more. So it brings me to this morning to this guy called David. Let me just set the, the tone of David for you for a moment. David in the Bible is described as a divinely inspired man. His character was one of the principal reasons for his success. He relied, David relied on God for guidance. And he displayed great sincerity and he showed great courage. Overall, he had both strengths and weaknesses which humanized him. You see, for the people who think we can't do no wrong, I want you to understand we are in human flesh. And so we need to get to that place and recognize as human beings, we will make mistakes. But when we are willing and ready to understand our faults and our mistakes, then we would understand how to get out of it. David was a man of contrast. While he showed great devotion to God, yet he failed miserably and committed some of the most egregious and serious sins that was recorded in the Old Testament. One of the most compelling exchanges huh, between Nathan and David is recorded in verse 7 of the same chapter. And it said, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. This was Nathan talking to David. I want you to hear this carefully. And he says in the 8th verse, And I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. And I gave you, this is God, God, God gave him. He gave him all this. And I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And then he said, and if that had been too little, my God, help me this morning. I would have also given you much more. The language of God there wasn't anything I wouldn't have done for you, David. Anything you wanted, all you had to do was ask. And whatever you asked for, I would have given it to you according to how I saw it representing in your life. But you just felt, David, that you had to do some things on your own. You felt with all what I gave you, you needed to go take this man's wife and make a child with her. Consider this. David's issue was as a result of his own self-inflicted problems. So then I got to thinking... Since the issues of 2020 wasn't our fault, how much better is it going to be for you when you reestablish your position? Just, just saying. The only time we lose ground or come up short is when we remove our focus from God. In his heart, in his heart, David knew he had messed up. As you read the text and you understand the dialogue back and forth, David knew he had messed up. His spirit was uncomfortable. His heart was troubled. The text indicates that David, David now says to Nathan, 
I have sinned against the Lord. He knew he messed up. He knew what he did was wrong. Oh, can I continue here? And don't get offended, but if this is for you, this is for you. I said before, it may not be for everybody, but it's for somebody. David did not attempt to rationalize his actions. He didn't attempt to blame someone else for what had happened. He didn't try to make excuses. His spirit prompted him to confess because he knew he stepped out of the will of God. You see, sometimes, beloved, there's some folk who just can't seem to take responsibility. Some folk always looking, oh my God, I don't know. Uh, let me not look at nobody because I ain't talking to you right here. But some folk just seem to, to, to don't ever want to take responsibility. Things happen in their lives and they're always looking for somebody to blame or something to blame. But God said, you got to understand that when you reestablish your position, when you come to that place where you begin to soul search and you begin to do like David and you begin to confess your own problems, your own faults and your own sins, then some things will go right for you. Some folk might have been pushed out of the will of God on this year and others may have willfully stepped out of the will of God this year. Why do I say that? Well, lots of churches weren't able to have in-house worship and some people would go in and some people would watch online and some people would say, well, this is free Sundays. And so they would not attend. Some people would still send their gifts and, and, and their tithes and offering and do their part. And then some people would say, well, this is a break. God created this break. Life from the pit of hell. God didn't create no break like that. But God is presenting you with an opportunity to reclaim that place in him so that you may prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. Nathan told David, the Lord also has put away your sin and you shall not die. And although David would have deserved whatever punishment God could have given him, it's interesting to note that God forgave his sin. But he didn't remove the consequences of his sin. It is important to note that God said, I forgive you, but I'm not going to release you from the consequences of what you did. Ah, this is getting really tight right here. Uh, David had to get back to his original position in God. God presented him with an opportunity. In the same manner, I believe that the sons and daughters of God experience the same divine forgiveness because God continually offers us opportunities to right our wrongs, to correct our mistakes, and to learn from our faults, and to reestablish our position in Him. God, listen, uh, 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 make no mistake about it, uh, God does not immediately act upon every sin that we commit. Uh, because if every time we sinned and God reacted to it, uh, half of us would not be here today. But God does not immediately react. Uh, he gives us an opportunity, my God Almighty, to correct the wrongs in our life, uh, to reestablish ourselves with him. For the Bible says if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, and we can go to the Father and confess our sins uh, and gain forgiveness uh, and take our rightful place back in Christ. Uh, so he offers up this, uh, this opportunity to us uh, to identify and willingly return to our positions. Get this, get this. Uh, we have an opportunity, I want you to get this clearly, to discover our relationship with God from an internal position rather than an outward expression. When we return to God and reestablish who we are in Christ, 
we begin to discover the relationship from a spiritual perspective and not just some outward position. Walking into church with a Bible is not a relationship with God. Walking around in, 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 in the choir or singing in the choir with a robe on or standing at a pulpit preaching the word is not a relationship with God. It's an outward expression of who you are representing. You are representing a child of God. But the relationship must start with the spirit man, where spirit is lined up with spirit, where we are following the will of God, where we come to that place where we acknowledge that this, the Lord God, is my savior. He is my healer, my guide, my, my power. He is who I depend upon. So, 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 so we got to understand that here we are with an opportunity to discover that internal relationship and put away the outward expressions. This then, when you get to that, is a place of maturity that allows you to step out from your opinions and your views and your knowledge and put on the Spirit of God, which will position you for His promises. I want you to keep in mind that God had already, and God has already assigned promises and releases to your lives and breakthrough, and you just got to get in that place where your spirit is in the right place, where your opinion doesn't guide you, your views doesn't guide you, your learnings and your education doesn't guide you, but the spirit of God guides you. The church and God's people continue to operate below their potential because too often they're trying to resolve their own issues, their own issues, their own situation, their own circumstances. And they're doing it in their own understanding rather than returning to and seizing the opportunities that God has given you. Oftentimes, we get too busy. We get too caught up watching the clock checking the calendar, looking for the mail, waiting for a paycheck, concerned about what people say or think about us. We get too busy just trying to figure out when we're going to get paid and how it's going to make it work. We are too busy trying to look at the calendar and set dates and times in when we need to have everything done and how everything's supposed to flow. Well, well this, is 2020 an example? of why the calendar and the clock don't matter to you? Is it, a, a, is it a teaching? Is it a learning curve to us now? Because what we got to do is we got to understand and let the opportunity which God is providing not pass us by. We got to make sure we don't miss God's opportunity while we are looking for our solutions. The enemy likes to distract us by highlighting our faults and highlighting our lack and anything that's negative in front of us so that we can lose sight of the opportunities which God has set in right in our very eyes. How many times have you told yourself, I'm stressed out? How many times have you told yourself, I'm worried or I don't feel good? And you miss the opportunity to get in that little place, that little place, which is called in your mind, that little place, your head ain't that big, like my, like my head ain't all that big either. So your head, in, in there is your mind, your conscious, your spirit. And it's a little place, but it could take down big situations. That little place holds the spirit of God. And it's from that little place that you can break out from a place of negativity. It's in that little place, instead of saying that I'm sick, say that I'm healed. It's in that little place that instead of bringing upon this whole body sickness, you can bring upon it healing. It's in that little place. Get this, get this. Most large victories come from a small place. Most wars are not decided on the battlefield. 
they are decided and they are one in the war room, in a room where the generals and where the commanders and the colonels sit and make plans and plots and send things and do things and order things. That's where the war is won. It's not won on the battlefield. And I'm not discrediting our brave men and women who are fighting for our freedom. I'm not discrediting them. But I'm saying to you that the idea of how we're going to win originates in a smaller location. Just as your victory and your, and your blessings and your release comes from a smaller place. Not all of the 12 months of this year. It comes from a place where you can trust and believe God and says, This too shall come to pass. Your victory and your promises are not attained in the corporate buildings and offices. They are procured in the place of your mind which identifies this is an opportunity from God, which tells you in your spirit, go now and go with the blessings and go with the anointing of God and speak those things that are not as though they were. Command a favor upon a bank manager. Command favor upon a loan officer. Command favor upon a bill collector. Command favor wherever you go. From that place is where you can change the bigger problems. Get this, get this. Although God forgave David's sin, David's actions had given an excuse or reason for the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. So God could not just let David's bad behavior go unchecked. God could not just let the enemies of the Lord think that God would tolerate this kind of nonsense. So, 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 so understand, sometimes God don't let us off the hook that easy. We might be in a situation because of something we did or didn't do. So while the sin was forgiven, the consequence was imposed. This is for somebody right here. This is for somebody. You got to stop living your life believing that God did not forgive you for some things in your past. You got to shake that negative, shake that burden off of you. Take the opportunity that God has given you where he has spoken in your spirit and says, your deliverance has come. I've delivered you from there. Stop going in your past and bringing back stuff and feeling that God hasn't forgiven you. If you trusted God, if you've turned your life over to God, if you have declared him as your Lord and Savior, if you have decided to abide in the word and allow the word to abide in you, then your past, your sins, your faults, your shortcomings have been forgiven. Stop letting people remind you of it and putting you on some guilt trip and making you feel that you are not worthy of what God said you are. If you trust God and believe God, if you have reclaimed your place in God, if you are standing in the word of God, I don't care what nobody said about me. I don't care about what happened in the past. I don't care about the things, the ungodly things that you may have done in the past, myself included, but I am a new creature. For the Bible says if you're born again, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. And so I'm not going to let the old things affect the new place and the future where God is bringing me. Through prayer, and the reestablishment of your position and your claim in God, the promises which God has already decided to give you will be restored. The text says to us, Nathan told David, the child who is born to you shall surely die. There's a consequence. God can't just let there be no consequence. God has, uh, 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 I want to say rules and regulations, but that's sort of so secular. I want to say God has uh, 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 stipulations and God has good direction and guidance. And we got to follow it. Sure enough, the child became ill. 
The Bible says, and David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted, which was an expression of intensity. And he fasted for the child, for he was concerned. And he laid all night, the Bible says, on the ground. And he didn't speak to anyone. His heart was in anguish. You see, clearly David was going through the guilt of his sins. He felt these actions, what he was doing, fasting and, and not eating and, and crying out and, you know, and being mourning and sad. He felt that these actions would change God's mind concerning the child. But the decision was already made. God had already sent the word, the child is going to die. <laughs> oh, that's some tough cookies right there. But what I noticed about it is, and this is just a little FYI on the side, what I noticed about it is, it, it, the child was not named. The child had no name. And what I noticed about it is, that this situation occurred, and the child was not grown to any degree. The child was still a babe, a newborn, and so... I, I'm not trying to speak for God, but what I feel God revealed to me was that David would be able to move on from this punishment. You see, sometimes God knows how to deal with our stuff where even though we are being punished, we are being given a break. It was an opportunity. Help, help me, Holy let me move it forward, and I'll explain that later. Because I hope you see this here. God has to carry out certain things concerning our life, which doesn't necessarily line up with the way we would like to see it happen. But if we trust God, who knows the end of a thing while we are yet at the beginning of it. If we trust God with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, it would mean getting back to your original position in Christ, uh, committing to your decisions that you made when you gave your life to the Lord, when you stood at the altars and said, have your way, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your ways be had. I'll give it all to you, Lord. We made that original covenant agreement. That's what we negotiated. And that's what God is holding us to. When you gave control over to God, watch this, uh, when we make decisions in our life uh, and those decisions don't work out, God still gives us an opportunity to fix those things. Just imagine if you breach a contract, uh, if you breach a contract in the natural if you sign a mortgage agreement, a contract with the bank, and you stop paying the bank, they are going to take action and seize your home. They are going to take action and bring you up in court and, 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 and get, get their reward. Understand that we made a covenant agreement with God to have His way. Take full charge. How many times have you retaken the charge? How many times have you taken back the reins of your life from God and acted in your own capacity? But God didn't say, I'm going to sue you and I'm going to take it away and, I'm going, and you broke the contract. You know what? God comes back around with another opportunity to correct our faults. Can I get you to understand this? God doesn't just act upon us and, 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 and destroy us because we've broken agreement. God says, come back. Here's another opportunity. I will even help you fix the problem so that you can get back on track because at the end of it all, there's some promises that I must and want to give to you. God is doing it because he wants to bless us. Let me just remind you again what verse 7 says because this was the impact verse in this whole thing. God said, I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. 
And I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. Here it comes. Here it comes. And if that hadn't been enough, if that had been too little, I would have also given you much more. So can I impress upon you, by virtue of the Apostle Paul writing in the first book of Corinthians, in the second chapter, but as it is written, your eye hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor had it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. In other words, God still has the things that you can't see or understand, and he wants to present it to you. So here comes the opportunity again, presenting us with an opportunity, and he's saying, reestablish your position. I know it didn't work out the first time, but stand back, come back to this point, and let's do it all over again. The Bible says that in David's uh, 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 court, the elders of his house, who were his senior officials and advisors, they went up to raise him up from the ground. And keep in mind, he is the king. And from a position of optics, that's not a good look for the king. The king is on the ground. He's messed up. He's all looking bad. He's looking sad. He, 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 the guilt of sin is all over him. People, there must be rumors. There must be stuff going on. People know what he did. My God, this is the king. But here's what's so awesome. God is not a respecter of man. So it really doesn't matter how things look. But here's the revelation. Not the advisors. None of them. None of the senior counsel. None of the kingdom help could have brought David out of his place of Lodabar. He was going to be stuck there as long as God wanted him to. David was in that place in his spirit in Lodabar. He was at the lowest point of who he can be. But he was still the king. And God could have let him get right on up out of there and get out of it to look good. But God don't care about what it looks like. God don't care about that. God says, you've done something and you're going to have to pay the price for it. But nobody else can help you. So while the advisors thought it would be smart to lift him up, to bring him, to sit him in his chair, to clean him up, and God says, no, 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 no. None of y'all can do that. By his own admission, he's going to stay there. And this is for somebody right here. You may be stuck in a situation for a minute, but I want to let you know that day your weeping may endure it for a night, but your joy is going to come in the morning. No one and nothing is going to be able to pick you up from your position that you're in until God releases you into your opportunity. Until God puts you in that place where you can reestablish yourself in him. The Bible says that on the seventh day the child died. And the servants were afraid to tell David because they did not figure out how he was going to react. They, they, they rationalized that when the child was alive, we spoke to him and he wouldn't respond. He wasn't eating. He wasn't doing anything. So how can we tell him that the child is dead? They fear that he may do harm. He may do harm to himself or he may do harm to them because they had seen the intensity in which he was pleading with God to save the child. They could only imagine what the rage would look like when he found out that the child was dead. But watch this. This was really cool. The Bible said David perceived that the child was dead when he saw them whispering. The atmosphere around him gave him the perception that the child was dead. What did I just say to you? God will speak to you through so many different avenues when your spirit is in lockstep with God. 
when your spirit is in lockstep with God, there are so many ways that God will communicate with you. It don't have to be a prophet. It don't have to be a convention. It don't have to be a message. It don't have to be a pastor. It don't have to be a prayer team. But God will speak to you when your heart and your spirit is in lockstep with him. God, through the atmosphere that was around David afforded him the ability to know that the child was dead. The text says David rose from the ground and he washed himself and he anointed himself and he changed his clothes and he went into the house of the Lord. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. And he went into the house of the Lord. You ready for us? And worshipped. And worshipped. Notice a couple of things here. Notice a couple of things. He was being released from the consequences of his past. God, on that seventh day, took the child, brought the child's life to, com to termination, and on that day, at the death of the child, it was the release of David's past. My God, I wonder if you can get this up. It allowed him to raise up, to rise up from his spiritual distress. It allowed him to, set, to get off of him this guilt and the spiritual debt that he faced. And he was able to reestablish his place in God. He knew his spirit when was the time to resume his rightful place. God, on that seventh day, removed the burden of his sins and of his wrongdoing and gave him his place back. Who is this for right here? God removed the problems of his past. I believe God is about to remove all the things of this year off of our shoulder and bring us back. Here is the opportunity that is being given to us today to reestablish ourselves in God, reestablish our position in Christ, uh, and prepare ourselves uh, to receive the promises which God has already promised. Uh, he presented himself in the authority which God had placed him. Watch this, watch this. David is no longer this half of a man sitting in a dungeon, crying and moaning and looking all dirty because he is not a representative of a king. He could not be the king looking dirty. He could not be the king looking weak. He couldn't be looking, to, he couldn't be the king looking uh, uh, like he was all messed up. And he, he couldn't lead God's people from a place of mourning and weakness and sin and shame. Some point in time, God will release you and have you to take your rightful place. Who am I talking to right here? Somebody needs to hear this. He had to shake off the stuff that was holding him back. The stuff that was messing him up. He had to begin to act the way God had called him to act. Somebody needs to understand you got to stop being your own critic. Stop being your biggest enemy and begin to act like the God, the God that's in you. Begin to bring yourself to the place where God sees you and not where people see you. Reestablish yourself in God. He had to resume being the man of God. Who am I talking to? You need to resume being the child of God that you know you are. Everything that has happened has destroyed that image of you. And you are buying into the things that have destroyed your image. Shake it off. Do like David. Take stock of yourself. You may have been beaten down. You may have been beaten down by a situation or circumstance. And, and, and a lot of things have come around you to cause hurt and harm this year. Your expectations have de de demolished. But I came by to tell the believer today, get up from your place. Get up from that place where your spirit is in mess, where your spirit feels messed up. Wash yourself off and anoint yourself and 
change your attitude and pick up the pieces of this year 2020 and re-establish who you are. Declare and decree to yourself that I am more than the conqueror. Resume your position in Christ and stand up in the word of God and declare like brother Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. For those of you who believe that God's got your back, then you must understand that you must trust in him because he knows what you've been through. He knows how much you have suffered this year. He knows how much you have endured. And God said to remind you, you need to step into that place of worship. Take this opportunity which God has presented. Get out of your loader bar. Lift up your worship and get ready to take your place at the king's table. David reminded his servants uh, while the child was alive he fasted and he wept uh, because he believed maybe just maybe the Lord will be gracious to me and allow the child to live but peep this out for a minute uh, he said but now that the child is dead why am I still mourning why am I still complaining why am I still crying? Why am I still acting the fool? I can't bring the child back. I shall go to him one day, but he shall never return to me. I would be remiss if I lead anyone to think that the last 12 months or so was anything but trying and difficult. But I would tell you that this is our seventh day. <laughs> This is our seventh day, my God Almighty. Beginning tomorrow is actually the seventh. Uh, but our seventh day is here now. Uh, and it's time for the sons and daughters of God to reestablish their boldness. Uh, reestablish their confidence, their determination and their trust in God and without a doubt be convinced that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I say to you today, reestablish your position despite all you've been through. Wash yourself out, anoint yourself, reclaim your position and say, this is over now. This is over now. God has closed the book on this. Now it's time for me to become successful again. Now it's time for me to step into 2021 and get all the things that God had for me in 2020 and 2021. It's almost like, like Job said, it's going to be double for your trouble. Can you handle that? Can you handle that? Well, if you can, you got to reestablish who you are. You can't become the new you, the one that's just upset, sad, mad, and, and, and just don't understand the why, and looking for every, you know, everything that went wrong and put the blame on top of it. We know it went wrong. I'm not being insensitive. I'm not telling you that, 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 that ignore anything. But I'm telling you if you want to get ahead, if you want to run the race, you got to get back in the starting blocks. If you want to do this sprint, the race was declared a false start. 2020 was a whole false start. Nothing happened for the people of God that they probably expected. Your expectations didn't come to pass the way you looked at it, the way you heard about it, the way, whatever. You can sit there and question it all year long. You could sit there and wail about it and cry about it and be upset about it and be mad about it and, and talk about all the things you missed. Or you can look to God right now and grab a hold of this opportunity and start it all over. Start it all over and say, God, I need you to be with me on this. Take me to my promises. Take me, God, to my blessings. And as a matter of fact, you're not going to discard the blessings of 2020. Give me that and give me what's to come. Give me what I missed and give me what I'm supposed to get. In Jesus' name, reestablish your position today. 
don't let all the negative overwhelm you. It is negative. There's a lot of negative. But I'm living positive in a negative situation. I intend to live positive in the midst of the negative. I'm not going to give in to it. Because I know my God is greater than that. I know my God can take the impossible and make it possible. I know who God is. I know where God has brought me from. I know that I wasn't supposed to be even be here. But thank God for his saving grace. So why would I think now that God can't correct and fix and do this all over again? Beloved, this is your opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. The next couple of weeks leading into next year, I believe God is going to do some phenomenal things. I believe that God, and God's put this in my spirit very strong. I believe that God is not just going to bless us with 20, 21 blessings, but I believe that everything that we did not have as God had promised, because he's not a man that he can lie. So every promise that he made to you, or every promise that was designed and, and set up for you in 2020, you're going to see it coming. You're going to have a double portion come 2021. You're going to have everything that you didn't get and everything that you're supposed to get. Double for the trouble of 2020. Father, I thank you for allowing me to release this word upon your people, God. I released it as you told me now, Father, in the name of Jesus. You, God, as they make the adjustment, you, God, need to make your adjustment. You, Lord, need to guide them through the next couple of weeks and into the next year and show them that your word is yea and amen. Show them, Lord, that you are not a man that can lie. Release to them what was and what is to come in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Beloved, God bless you richly. I pray that you are positioning yourself for a wonderful holiday season. I pray that you are just overwhelmed and overwhelmed with the joy of the Lord and that you will let nothing by in any manner or in any way destroy your joy and your peace. Nothing. No, 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 no virus, no sickness, no disease, no, no lack, no nothing. Don't let nothing destroy you, your, 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 your joy and your peace. That's the one thing that you have. And I pray that you will hold on to it by reestablishing your position in God. Amen. God bless you richly. I look forward to seeing you again. In the meantime, May God's richest blessings be upon you. May God's joy, peace, love, and happiness be with you. Remember, it's already decreed and it's already declared that you are blessed and you are not stressed.